If you're dealing with debt, you know how frustrating it can be. And so do we. We're family credit management. And over the past 20 years, our experts have helped thousands of families conquer their debt. What we do is work with you and your creditors to find a customized solution to your finances. Isn't it time you took control of your financial future? As one of the nation's largest nonprofit credit counseling agencies, we're trusted experts who can really help. But you must take the first step. Hey, good evening. We are back again for another show. My name is Letitia Griffin, and I'm here today to talk to you about any types of issues or problems that you may be having dealing with your debt, dealing with finances, anything that you have like relating to your financial goals, your financial freedom. That's what I'm here for. So for the next 25 to 30 minutes or so, feel free to give us a call with any questions that you may have. If you've got comments or um, tricks and tips that you want to share with us, feel free to do so. 312-738-1060. One zero six zero. Now, if you do not get the opportunity to call in, or perhaps you're a little shy, don't want to talk over, you know, the the um, show. That's fine. Always feel free to reach out to a counselor at eight hundred nine nine four three three two eight. Now, the great thing about it is that you know, Family Credit has counselors on standby to answer your questions, your concerns, anything that you have regarding debt and finances. But they've also got a really great website that's got this online chat feature. You can go online, chat directly with a counselor. They can assist you, give you whatever type of advice, whatever you may need. The counselors are on standby to assist you. So use that as a resource. So in the next few minutes, uh, we just want to focus on today. I think we'll talk a little bit about, you know, credit myths and why that's important. So we'll talk about what some people believe, what some people think, things that you may come across, you wanna know if it's true or not, that's what we're here for. So feel free to call in with those. Before we get started though, just wanna, you know, keep in mind, rates are on the rise. Interest rates are, on the, are expected to increase next year. So it's the, right now it's the best time, the most important time to think about your finances. Think about your future and your obligations, um, any things that you have set up, that you, your goals. Think about those right now because even when rates do rise, you want to make sure that you are able to afford whatever payments out there. And you may notice that years ago, rates were in the double digits anyway. So you want to be prepared and now think about it. It's not so much as focusing on what the actual interest rate number is because of course we all got accustomed to the low interest rates, the two to three percent, the four percent, you know, um, and we like seeing that. But now rates are going to be a little bit higher. So you want to be sure that you have things in line so that you're able to comfortably afford the payment. You want to be able to focus on that first off and know that your credit situation is the best situation that you can possibly have so that you can get, you know, the better rates. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit higher, but you want to make sure you're getting the best of both worlds, right? So start now looking at your debt, your finances, your budget. Take a look at that. Another thing that I want to point out or that I've been pointing out is that when, when the year changes and we go into the new year, also keep in mind credit scores will not only just focus on your credit, but they will look at your bank account too. So keep that in mind. You want to make sure that your credit is on track, your bank account is on track, your finances, your debt obligations, everything is on track and you know what's going on. Rule of thumb, if you're looking to apply for a loan, look at maybe six months before you apply, checking out your credit, making sure everything is great there. Check out um, your information on your report and then go back again right before you apply just so that you know what's on it and what you're getting yourselves into. If you got problems with that or you've got questions relating to your report, feel free to reach out to a counselor at 800-994-3328. And they can assist you in pulling your report and helping you go over it in a way that you will understand and you'll know what's there and you know what to expect. That's the best thing. So, um, as we get into um, talking about those things that are coming up, you want to make sure you're staying on track with your debt and your finances. Remember, we've got three bureaus that we go to, Equifax, TransUnion, and Experience. So we'll be sharing some more information about that. Again, feel free to reach out to a counselor, 800-994-3328 to ask any questions that you may have. 
So as we get into the show, we want to talk a little bit about credit myths and things that people believe about the credit that may or may not be true. First thing that I've heard this week is um, just having to do with actually checking your individual report. So person came to and asked, okay, so if I check my own credit report, doesn't checking my credit report hurt my score? And so think about it. If you check your credit report, it does not hurt your score because you're actually checking it. And you're checking to make sure that things are on track, right? So when you're doing that, most likely you're looking at your bureau directly from the credit bureaus and it's getting an educational score. You're getting an educational view, a view that's meant to teach you. And it's also different from what lenders will see when they pull your credit report too. So it's actually will not hurt it if you pull it. But if you are looking to get credit from a bank, from a credit union, um, you're looking to finance a car, if you are looking to get credit from anyone, that's when it will affect your score. And that becomes an inquiry on your credit report. Now, there's a couple of different types of inquiries that we can talk about when we think about your credit report. There is something that's called a hard pull and a soft pull. And of course, the soft pull is there and it's meant again for educational purposes so that if someone that is not granting you credit pulls your credit, they can help you with it. They can look at what's there. They can see the your information, but because they're not looking to grant you credit, it does not affect your score at all when they pull. So keep that in mind. Now, where you get where things get tricky is that when you're looking for credit or you're looking for a loan and when that happens, someone will pull your credit and it's called a hard inquiry. One thing that you remember about an inquiry though is you have to give them permission to actually pull your credit report. And that's when it becomes a hard inquiry when you're giving them permission to pull your credit report and they are looking to grant you credit. Hard inquiries, they can stay on your report for up to three years. Actually, most people will remove them or most companies will remove them after two though, but it can stay up to three. And it's only factored into your score though, the last 12 months. So any inquiries showing on your report, there will be there for at least a year or more, they hurt your score for a year. So keep that in mind. So if you're looking to get credit, a lot of times it's best to space those out because each time it could affect your score. We'll talk about that a little bit more. It looks like we've got our first caller. Hi, welcome to the show. Hi, um, someone took out credit cards in my name and they're making purchases with them. What do you suggest they do? First thing that you need to do, if someone's opened up accounts in your name, you know they're not your accounts, you need to let the credit bureaus know. First thing you do, of course, contact Equifax, TransUnion, or Experian. Now when you do that, if you contact one bureau, they'll contact the other two for you and they will put an alert on your credit report. At that point, no one should be able to be um, should be able to use or to try and open credit in your name. You may need to contact that creditor as well. If you've got that information, you found out like what type of account it is or you've got some idea, you can try and contact that uh, creditor as well, but you may not have, depending on what information you have, you may or may not have success with that. But if you go through the credit bureaus, they will walk you through everything. They will help you with that. They'll get that card closed down and you need to let your bank know too. Also, after you do that, you will need to file a police report. And once you do that, you file a police report, you can go to your local law enforcement agency. Sometimes you can do it online, just depends on where you are. But you need that credit report so that you can submit that to the credit bureaus as well. And that will help block that information from hurting your credit report. Now, depending on what type of account it is, you do not want to be seen as being liable for that debt. So you do want to make sure that you follow up with them, that you know that account is closed out, You've notified the credit bureaus, you've gotten that police report, gotten that on file so that you're not held liable for it. Sometimes where things get sticky though, sometimes things like that happen and it's usually done by somebody that you know. So an emotional involvement may play in right there because let's see if it's a relative or some one of your close personal friends and they opened up that account now you have to start thinking about whether or not you're going to pursue action against them but keep in mind if you file that police report that means somebody's going to be held liable there should be an investigation on someone's part because the credit card companies don't want to get stuck with that debt either they know someone's out there they're using that account so you want to make sure that if you do know who it is and uh, you don't want them to 
um, pursue legal action against that individual, you may want to have them set up payment arrangements or help them set up payment arrangements or whatever you want to do to work out that situation. But that's between you and that person. As far as your credit bureau goes, though, you do want to get that account frozen on your credit report. You want to get that information off of it. So be diligent, follow up with the credit bureaus, making sure that you are taking care of that information. If you need some help with that, you can always, always, always reach out to a counselor at 800-994-3328. They can help walk you through that. You can also go to um, look at your law enforcement agencies. You can look at the Consumer Finance Protection Bureau because they will have some great information on how to protect yourself against identity theft and what to do next because that's what's happening here. You become the victim of identity theft. So we were talking about some of the credit myths that people actually deal with or that they're experiencing right now. One of the things that I um, came across in a seminar that I was doing is that someone actually thought that if they closed out credit cards that that would help their credit score. Right now, one of the biggest factors in your credit score is making sure, or is letting everyone know that you've got this available credit available and you're not using it. It's your credit utilization. So if you close out an account, what's happening is that you're saying whatever that credit line is, it's no longer available and it's not going to be reporting on your credit any longer. So that means everything that it has been reported is actually null and void now. So it's making your available credit less and it's removing that history, that positive history that you actually need to keep. So if you've got some accounts that you're paying them off, the Greatest thing that you can do to help your credit report, pay those accounts off, but leave the accounts open. Do not close out those accounts. We need to see that that information is there and that is helping strengthen your credit profile because it's showing that you've got all this credit and you know how to use it responsibly. With credit utilization, rule of thumb, make sure you stay under 30% of your credit limit. That's the best thing that you can do. Now, if you can go stay lower than that, that's going to actually improve your score as well. So you want to keep those accounts open as long as you can. You want to make sure that you're not using your available credit and that you're staying positive with that. You know, they say that the people with the highest scores only use 7% of their available credit and they've had their accounts established for at least three years or longer. So keep that in mind when you're thinking about the credit cards that you have and whether you want to close them, whether you want to keep them open. So think about that. looks like we've got another caller. Hi, welcome to the show. Hi. Um, would having multiple credit cards help increase your credit score faster than just having one card? That's a really, really good question. A lot, not a lot of people even think about things like that. When you've got multiple credit cards, or you're trying to decide whether you should have multiple credit cards or how you should handle your portfolio, the key is that you want to have a credit mix of everything that you could possibly think of, but you want to be able to handle it responsibly. You don't want to go over your limits and you don't want to have more than you can afford to pay for it in the course of a month. Now, with that being said, should you have multiple cards or what? That's really up to you. What you want to pay attention to is the credit limits and the available credit that you have on the cards. So if you got, if you got, you know, 10 credit cards and they have your available credit and you're not using them, the credit is there, then that's what's going to help your credit profile. Maybe you've got, you know, 10 credit cards, they all have $500 on them, and so that's what your available credit is. Or you can have one credit card with a $5,000 limit and not even use that. So it's pretty much the same thing. It's all about your available credit that you have, not necessarily the amount of cards that you have quick tip that some people try and use is that if they are looking to improve their credit score and they have a card that they've had for a while, great relationship with the creditor, and they have maintained it positively, you can also contact that creditor to see about getting a credit limit increase which will improve your score as long as you're not using that credit. So keep that in mind too. And sometimes you can call the creditor and they'll tell you when they run specials, they can tell you like if they've got any offers coming up soon, if they will be able to increase your credit limit. So they can give you their schedule as well too. So stay in contact with your creditors, find out what offers they have to, um, for you and just keep an eye on your overall credit health. Looks like we've got another caller. Hi, welcome to the show. Hi, um, I've heard that closing your credit cards can make your credit score drop. Is that true? 
Actually, if you close your credit score, it does reduce your credit. So that's a really great point. We were talking about closing out those cards a little bit ago. But yeah, if you close out your cards, not only does it show that you're you don't have that available credit but now it does actually drop your score so that's the other side of it that we didn't even talk about so thanks for pointing that out when you close out those accounts it does drop your score too because that account is not reporting anymore so if it was a strong factor before it's gone and it's reduced your score so keep that in mind another uh, myth that I came across is that some people actually believe that the credit reports determine whether you have a good score or a bad score. And I wanted to talk to you about that for a few seconds because the credit bureaus don't really determine whether our score is good or bad. We have the say in that. And it's determined by what we do, um, whether we're making our payments on time, whether we're staying under our credit limits, uh, whether we have any collections or anything like that that is reporting on our credit report. So we actually determine what's good and what's bad on our own profile. Now the credit bureaus, they're there. We use those three bureaus, Equifax, TransUnion, and Experian all the time. But they're keeping track of so much information not just for us but for other people they're keeping track of they've gone off into businesses they keep track of the different creditors all is it this information that they're housing so sometimes they can get it wrong and I say that to say that if you notice that there's something on your credit report or if you think your score is low and you don't know why it's always a good idea to take a look at it because there could be something reporting incorrectly to your credit report and you not even be aware of it so that's why another reason why I say at least six months before you're looking to get credit pull your report find out what's there and that will help things go a long ways we all you know make mistakes and the credit bureaus can make mistakes too but we have to point those mistakes out so that they are fixed and our scores are made better so if you are looking to dispute information or if you see something on your credit report that's wrong you can dispute it directly with the credit bureaus and that's the one of the greatest things that you can do one of the greatest things around because you're disputing it with the credit bureaus they're doing all the work for you you're just pointing out what's wrong what you feel is wrong and that inaccurate information so once they prove that it is inaccurate they remove that from your credit bureau if they feel like something um, if you feel like maybe the account is there but the balance is wrong or that they didn't report your last payment or they're showing you late and you really weren't those are things that you can dispute through the credit bureaus directly best way to do that is to go directly to their website and their names are actually their web addresses too so you got transunion.com equifax.com and experian.com you can go to the education center on their websites and they all have really great forms that you can just go in fill in a drop down put in your information and sometimes if you have that relationship with the bureau you may have login information already that you can go in and dispute things on your credit report and find out what's wrong now once you handle that dispute or you submit that dispute they have roughly about two weeks to get back to you with an answer if they can't answer you then that information will be removed from your credit bureau report so always keep that in mind at the end of your dispute you're going to get a new report you're going to get a detailed report showing what changed on your new report and what's been filed valid or what's been removed all that information will be available for you so there's your chance right there to make things better for yourselves one thing that I've seen some people do that actually hurt them is that they dispute everything on your credit report that's another method that I've seen people go through they say well if I dispute everything on my credit report then my credit report will get better big red flag you don't want to dispute everything on your credit report disputes were made for inaccurate information which means if something is wrong on your credit report or something needs to be updated because it's incorrect on your credit report that's when disputes are needed now while an item is in dispute it's not factored into your credit score but once that dispute is finished then of course that item goes back onto your credit report and it's factored into your score but keep in mind if you're trying to get a loan and you're um, disputing everything on your credit report and you try and dispute good information or positive information that's always been there and you know it's accurate but you were just trying to dispute so you disputed everything on there including positive information and what you've done 
is put a black flag or a black mark on a positive account and that's not what you want because that will remove that would move that account from a positive trade now it's going to show a derogatory trade because you've disputed it so be careful with disputes only dispute information that you know is wrong looks like we've got another caller hi welcome to the show I was wanting to take out payday loans to help me financially with buying Christmas gifts do you think that's like a good idea well, if you are looking to take out a loan for Christmas gifts, I do want to say that I don't believe that would be in your best interest. The thing about payday loans is when you get them, of course, they're 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 short they're meant to be short-term solutions to your problems. But the thing about it is that it's focused on when you get paid. So when you get paid, you get a loan, you're supposed to pay it back when your paycheck comes in, but just think about it. If you don't have the money to pay them now, you're probably not going to have the money again when you get paid in two weeks and to be able to pay them and your regular bills. So that will start a vicious cycle where you'll be trying to pay that payday loan back every single time. You still need to make your monthly payments. So that's a really bad idea, especially for Christmas gifts. Think about it. With Christmas, usually you give gifts or you try and give gifts based off of love. And so what you can do there is be creative. Find some creative ways for you to go around actually having to buy things or buy gifts. And we'll talk about this uh, some more as we get into the holiday season as well. But there's so many different creative things that you can do. Instead of spending a bunch of money on Christmas gifts, try making something. Look up some holiday, uh, some holiday crafts that you can find. Look on Etsy. Some really great ideas on Pinterest. So make great use of those save your money and just think about it a lot of times you buy gifts for people and you don't know whether they're going to like them or anyway so instead of getting risking getting someone something that they don't like just think about it if you save that money and you work towards your financial freedom you'll be better able in the future to help out when you can or to make sure that you're okay and you will have saved that money that you were going to spend anyway. So I hope you avoid that this Christmas season. Save your money, thousands and thousands of dollars that you typically pay out. Save it, be creative, um, find some hobbies, some ways for you to save, budgeting ideas, tips, look at couponing. There's some things that we'll talk about as we get on with the season anyway. So I do want you to stay away from the payday loans though. They really don't help. And a lot of people even think that, you know, if they had a better job and they made more money, then their credit score would be better too. That's something else that you want to think about. We want to think about making the money that we have right now work for us. Because a lot of times when you get more money, that does not mean that you are going to pay that money on your bills too. So that's something for you to think about. We'll talk about some more credit myths a little bit as we get along. Um, but those are a few that I wanted to run past you guys today. So remember, if you check your credit report and you check it, it does not hurt your credit score. If someone is granting you credit, that's when it does hurt your score and your score gets lowered and it will affect you for at least 12 months. So keep that in mind. Also, anytime you close out an account, it does hurt your credit score, it lowers your score and it reduces your available credit and it takes away that history on that account as well. Uh, We've got three different bureaus, three different scores. So keep that in mind too. You want to keep an eye on all three of them before you go get credit at least six months. Go and look at your credit report, review it, know what's on it, know your financial boundaries as well. Remember, the credit bureaus don't tell us whether it's good or bad. We determine that ourselves. So make sure that you stay on track with your financial goals, your obligations, and that you are setting yourself up for success knowing in advance what you're getting yourselves into, focusing on whether you can afford the payment and not so much as the interest rates nowadays because we know interest rates are rising right now. They just went up a few weeks ago. They're expected to go up at least four times next year as well. So keep that in mind. Focus on whether you can afford the actual payment, not the pretty number that comes in front of it. And if you've got any other questions or comments, always feel free to reach out to a counselor at Family Credit. They will, are there to offer the assistance, to give you advice. Please feel free to use the chat feature at familycredit.org to ask any question that you may have regarding your debt and your finances. Also, if you've got some other questions or you want to call in next week, 
feel free to. We'll be back next week with some more advice, some tips. We can talk about some more credit myths and the holiday season. We'll see you again next week. Take care.